a few more examples okay, of the type of thing that you're going to get on your unit exam on Monday. So how many moles are in 65 grams of water? Okay, first thing, got to write down the formula for water. Okay, and as you can see on all four of these questions, I made them like I'm going to make them on the unit exam on Monday. That is, I gave you the name in words, not in formula form. All right, it does make a difference. So we got H2O here, so we might as well figure out what the molar mass of H2O is. All right, so that's going to be 1.01 .01 times 2 plus 16, which is 18.02 grams per mole. And the other thing the question gave us, they gave us something in grams, which is mass, and that is 600, or sorry, 65 grams. If we're asked to calculate moles, which part of the equation is moles? N. Odd, right? The only thing in there that starts with, well, one of the things that starts with M and it's represented by N. Sense chemists, I don't know. Okay, little m over big M, 65 over 18.02. So looking about three point something, right? 65 divided by 18.02. Okay, 3.61 we'll say. 3.61 what? Moles. All right, so that's the three mark variety, one mark for your givens, one mark for your math, one mark for your answer. Okay. Everyone's good with that one? All right. For the second one, what's the mass of eight moles of magnesium chloride? So this time they gave us N, and it's eight. And they tell us it's magnesium chloride. And I think I had one... It was magnesium bromide, I think, last year on the unit exam. Okay, um, and a lot of people got it wrong because they didn't swap and drop. Okay, they just went and started doing their mole calculation, right? Which is not a good idea. This is an ionic compound, two plus minus one, so this would be MgCl2. So that's going to mean uh, 24.31 plus 35. Whoop, 35.45 times two. Uh, so we're looking at 70.9, 94 94.21, 95.22, 21, I was going to say 21, alright, I should stop doing it in my head, but alright, 95.21 uh, grams per mole is our molar mass, okay, um, so from here, what do we do next? Right, write out the equation, n equals little m over big M, because we have to manipulate for little m. So we can't multiply both sides by big M, and it cancels on one side, comes over to the other. Remember, two rules in algebra. If you want to move something, do the opposite. What you do to one side, do to the other. Then you're done. That's all there is to algebra, okay? No triangles. Okay. Um, so we've got 95.21 times 8. Okay. Right, 761.68. Right. All right, so that's the four mark variety. One mark for your math, one mark for your algebra, one mark for your givens, and a mark for your answer. Okay, questions on that one? All right. How many people have done number three? As soon as we see the question ask about how many molecules, what number is going to be involved? Right, Avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 to the 23. The only time Avogadro's number is involved is if you have to deal with getting the number of particles or you are... Right, you're given. Yeah, it's one of your givens. If you're given the number of particles, then you'll have to work backwards with Avogadro's number to get the number of moles. Okay, in this case, we're looking for the number of molecules of sodium iodide. So, big M, N, A, and I together, mi uh, minus 1 and plus 1, so that compound is fine the way it's written. So we'll have 22.99 plus 126.7090. Okay. Um... I'm going to stop doing that in my head. 149.89 grams per mole. And the other thing we were given, 
the mass, 200 grams. All right, now, if I was lost at this point, okay, I'd only written down my givens, what should I calculate right now, even if I don't know how to get the number of molecules? N, the number of moles, because I have two out of the three things. All right, always remember that, guys, if you're not sure where to go, you're going to have probably two out of the three parts of the equation. All right, go from there. N equals little m over big M. Don't have to manipulate it here. So 200 grams over 149.89. 1.33? Yeah, that's pretty close. Yeah. All right. 1.33. And, and remember, you want to keep all your decimals here. So I'm actually going to do that in my calculator so I actually have the number. Okay, so that way I can use it when it comes time here in a minute. So this is 1.33 moles. I have the number of moles, and this number tells me the number of particles in one mole. What do I have to do with those two numbers? Multiply them. Okay, so I multiply them together to get the number of molecules. Okay, so we will have 1.33 with all the decimals in it times the molar mass 149.89. And look at that. Why did I do that? That was dumb. 1.33, <laughs> Of course I'm going to get 200 grams. I just figured out that. All right. 829 times Avogadro's number. I haven't had a full cup of coffee yet, guys. That's why. Um, E23. So we got 8.03 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Alright, so that's also a four mark question. One for the answer, one for this step here using Avogadro's number, one for your math here, and one for your given slash molar mass. Okay. Is it important for you to show all of your work? Okay, here's something I haven't talked to you about yet, but I will just because it's important for you to hear it. The right answer is worth one mark. If all you show me is the answer, I'm still inclined to give you all of the marks because you probably knew how to do it and aren't just an incredibly accurate guesser. Okay. However, if all you write down is the answer and you accidentally pressed one wrong number on your calculator, how many marks will you get? None. Even though you knew how to do the question, you got fat fingered on the calculator and now you get none. All right. It is so, so important to show your work. All right. If you're going to get marks for it, show it all because you just never know. Sometimes you just make a silly mistake and instead of losing one mark, you lose four, maybe five Okay, on a, on a question like that. So always show your work. I know it seems tedious and I know sometimes you're like, I don't need to show my work. I'm that smart. And you guys are. I know that. Okay. Show your work anyway, just in case. All right. Number four. What's the mass of 4.7 times 10 to the 23 molecules of lithium chloride? Well, right now I can calculate molar mass of lithium chloride. LiCl minus 1 plus 1, so that compound is swapped and dropped already. So we will have 6.94 plus 35.45, so we're 42.43. Four nine? Forty two point three nine, yeah, that seems better. Okay, grams per mole. All right. If I have the number of molecules and I know the number of molecules in one mole, what can I do with those two numbers to get the number of moles? Divide. All right. Okay. So N is going to equal 4.7 times 10 to the 23, the number of molecules I have, divided by the number in one mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. All right, now, little trick here. Exponents the same? Okay, save yourself a lot of time. 0 0.708 times 10 to the 23, or 7. 
8, 1 times 10 to the 22. Okay, you can shortcut a little bit if you understand exponents. And you're all giving me the blank look. Okay, we'll just... I'll leave that to your math teacher. Alright, 6.02... 23. Same number. Okay. So I got 0 0.781 moles. So 0 0.78 moles. Everyone with me there? Okay. Now we want to keep all those decimals, right? Okay. So 0 0.78 moles. Now what do I do if I want to get the mass? Okay, well first I use the mole equation, right? N equals little m over big M. Okay, and we have to manipulate. So we multiply both sides by M. Big M comes over here. Everyone's with me on that, right? Okay, so we've got then 0.78 moles times 42.39, and that'll give us our mass. Okay, so 33.10. And this would be a question where keeping all those decimals would make a difference. Okay, it, there's a chance here when you've got that kind of a rounding issue that you might have come up with 32 point maybe uh, 094 or 33.094 if you'd not kept all the decimals and then of course your answer would be different than mine. Now granted, if I'm looking at your exam and I see all the work right, and I see that you didn't round, I'm not docking you a mark for that because that's ridiculous. Okay? Until we talk about significant figures, that would be fine. So we got 33.10 grams. As our final answer, remember that is the only one worth five marks because there's your answer, your math, your manipulation, your use of the mole of the um, of the uh, Avogadro's number, and your givens for five marks. Okay? Are these making sense to everybody? Okay, we're not going to have any problem with these on the unit exam, right? Because there are no surprises. I am going to ask these ones, well, not these exact ones, but these four items, okay, on your unit exam. And now you have three examples of each of the four ways I can ask on podcasts. So if you're still not getting it, don't be afraid to watch them again. All right. Okay, before we get to the... Um, to the worksheet there and finish that up hopefully today. Um, I made one change to my website yesterday after a lot of people came to me on Monday when the Toxin Project was due and said, I don't know your email address, to which I was enraged. Um, but anyway, if you don't know my email address now on my website, there's a link to my email address. If you click on that, Okay, it should open up your, uh, well actually it'll open up this weird page that takes forever to load for some reason that has my email address on it. Actually it has all my information on it, but yeah. So you just click on that and then it'll take you to your mail program and you're off to the races then. So if you didn't know my email, there it is. Now you can get it that way. Yeah. Alright, so back to those worksheets. Okay, that is... Um, the moly 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 one. Okay, and if you finish that one on the back side of that, oh, I don't have the one that's on the back side of that. I'll have to fix that. Okay, is the uh, stoichiometry? It says stoichiometry assignment. It's modified, but it's just mole equation questions. The answers are on it. Okay, so if you look, if you flip it over, guys, the one that says stoichiometry assignment, it's not coming in for marks. Okay, the answers are on it, so that you can check if you've done each question right as you go. It's not a screw up. I did it on purpose. All right, and then uh, the next page there is just pho photocopied out of a textbook. Again, the answers for that one are on the key on my website. Terry, question? Yes, you can. All right, so for 11B here, guys, we have 1.63 times 10 to the 3 grams of copper to carbonate. All right, now... I can write 1.63 times 10 to the 3 this way. And it might be easier to picture sort of in your head. All right, 1.6 times 10 to the 3 means move the decimal three places to the right. And that's your real number. Everyone with me there? 
right? Because 10 to the 3 is 1,000. So now that I've got the mass, okay, m equals that, and I know it's CuCO3, I can calculate the molar mass. Uh, so for copper, we're looking at uh, 63.55. Okay, plus one copper, or sorry, one carbon, 12.01, plus 48, three calcium, or three oxygen, sorry. Okay, 63.55 plus 12.01 uh, plus 48. It was 123.56 for the molar mass, 123.56 grams per mole. Right? Now I'm looking for how many moles are present in that particular compound. Well, that means I just use N equals little m over big M with no manipulation. 1,630 grams over 123.56 grams per mole. It gives us 13.19 moles. Okay, does that make sense? Scientific notation thrown you? Yeah, this here. Yeah. Okay. Any other ones there, guys? You want to go over? Right. 10b. Okay, so how many atoms or molecules are present in each of the following? If we're going to get molecules, okay, then we have to first have uh, the number of um, moles, okay? Um, now, if I've got 36 moles of this stuff, what do I need to multiply 36 by to figure out the number of molecules? 6.02 times 10 to the 23, all right? So if I do that, okay, so 36 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23, Okay, I should get 2.16 times or 2.17 times 10 to the 25. Yeah. Mhm. Mm okay. Any others, guys? How many people are done the first side and onto the stoichiometry? Okay. Good. No, I do not desire you to write a paragraph, no. Okay. Yeah, guys, when you get to, um, uh, which number is that, Nathan? On the back side of that? Yeah, y don't do this. Yeah. Uh, okay. We've talked about what Avogadro's number is and why it's important. Okay, I don't want you to write a paragraph. You might want to just write this, it's the number in one mole. Yeah, that'd be good enough. Okay, that's what you need to understand about it is, okay, it is the number of particles in a mole. Okay, and uh, I also, I also don't expect you to do number two, okay. We've talked about that ad infinitum. We don't need to talk about it anymore. Okay. That means we talked about it until we were blue in the face, in case you were wondering what that meant. Alrighty, so yeah, just do the problem solving parts of those two sheets. All right, so for uh, for number six, what number six is essentially asking you is this. What's the difference between an atom of oxygen and a molecule of oxygen? Okay, the difference is, is that in a molecule of oxygen, there are how many atoms? How many? There's two atoms in every molecule of oxygen. So what you do is you start this out like it's any other mole equation question. Okay, um, I've got 64 grams. Well, that's little m, 64 grams. Then I got to find big M. What's the molar mass of oxygen gas? 32. Remember, the molar mass of oxygen for a single atom is 16. For this, it's 32. Okay, grams per mole. Well, now that I have little m and big M, can I find n, the number of moles? Yeah. All right. When I do that, that's pretty easy. It's 64 over 32, which is 2 moles. Now that I have that, can I use Avogadro's number to get the number of oxygen molecules? Okay. And again, I re reiterate, oxygen molecules. All right. 
So I multiply that by 6.02 times 10 to the 23, and I get 1.204 times 10 to the 24 molecules. So that's how much O2 I have. How many atoms of O do I have? How many times that number? Two. Okay. This is for O2. If I want to find how many O's I have, I have to multiply that number again by 2, which is going to give me 2.408 times 10 to the 24, uh, sorry, atoms of oxygen. All right. And the next question in line, same idea. All right. It's asking you to compare something that occurs in nature as a single atom with something that occurs in nature as a molecule. All right, the molecular elements bond to themselves and form molecules. Everybody with me there? Okay, so let's just look maybe at number seven here at the same time. Which contains more atoms, a mole of iron or a mole of oxygen gas? Okay, and this is a, it's tricky because I've been telling you it doesn't matter what it is. A mole is the same amount of everything, haven't I? Okay, but I mean it's the same number of the smallest particle of that material. Well. For iron, that's single iron atoms. All right? But for oxygen gas that occurs as two oxygen atoms bonded together, it's O2. So if I have a mole of oxygen and I have a mole of iron in the oxygen, I will have more atoms. Everyone follow me? A mole of oxygen gas has twice as many atoms as a mole of iron. All right? It has the same number of molecules as there are atoms of iron, but not the same number of atoms. All right? So again, these two questions are simply asking you to understand the difference between a molecule and an atom. Okay. Any other ones giving us trouble, guys? Okay. Don't be afraid to ask while you're working. Charlotte. because it asked me how many oxygen atoms there are. This number here told me the number of O2 molecules. Right? Each one of those molecules has two atoms in it. So to get the number of atoms, I have to multiply the number of molecules by two. Yeah? Okay. Any other ones there? Okay. Keep going there, guys. Okay, so number three here. We have 77.5 grams of phosphorus sitting on a watch glass. How many atoms are there? All right, so what I need to do here first okay, is make some room. All right, so I've got 77.5 grams of phosphorus. That's my mass. Right? And it's sitting on a watch glass. Now, I need to calculate the molar mass. This one's just like the last two. Phosphorus is what kind of an element? Special. It's a molecular element. Comes as a set of four. So I got to take my 30.97 and multiply it by four because phosphorus as an element is P4. Okay, so what's 30.97 times four? 123.88 okay, grams per mole. So now that I have that, can I get the number of moles? Yeah, all right. So I take my 77.5 and I divide it by 123.88. Okay. All right, so I've got 0.63 moles, we'll say. Now that I know the number of moles, can I calculate the number of um, atoms? Yes, but when I do this, multiply this by 6.02 times 10 to the 23, am I calculating the number of atoms or molecules? What do you think? Well, what molar mass did I use? Did I use the molar mass of a phosphorus molecule or the or the molar mass of a phosphorus atom? All 
I use the molar mass of a molecule. I multiply it by 4. Okay? So when I do this, this is going to give me the, the number of phosphorus molecules, which then I will have to multiply by 4. Okay? So again, it's the same idea. It's just asking you, do you understand the difference between a molecule and an atom? Yeah, yeah, you could. I just, I just want to illustrate again here, because the point of this is not to skip it, but to show, do we understand there's a difference? But you're right, you could do that. Yeah. Okay, okay any other ones there, guys? Oh, okay, well, when I, when I do this, okay, so if I do this operation here, 0.63 times 6.02 E23, okay, I get this number here. If I multiply that number by 4, it'll become like 12 times 10 to the power of 23, right? But that I would reduce, like, that's how we do exponents, right? I'd move the decimal one place over and bump up the exponent by 1. Yeah? Okay. Any other ones there, guys? Keep going then.